Well, an exciting day today, ladies and gentlemen. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at some of the features and gameplay for Train Sim World 3. Many, many times on this channel, we've taken a look at all the features of Train Sim World and Train Sim World 2, but now Train Sim World 3, the third, of course, in the in the uh, line of uh, sequels, I guess, is coming out on September 6, 2022. And we get to take our first early look at a few of the features, trains, and routes that will be coming soon. If you have a PC and, of course, if you have a console, you'll be able to play this as well. And uh, we're playing a little early, which is why it's saying Session Invalid up there, as we, uh, of course, can link our account together with previous saves and uh, other gameplay data from our previous uh, adventures and our extra XP and skills and things that we've unlocked to link it over to this game as well. So what sets this apart from Train Sim World 2? Well, there's a few new things to be added to the game, new routes coming soon, and some old routes that have been updated and uh, that were previous DLCs are now, now included in this game in the uh, very base game. So if we take a look here at choosing the routes today, I think we're going to take a little look at the Cajun Pass, which goes through... I believe San Bernardino, California, but the previous adventure of Spirit of Steam Liverpool to Crew takes place in the 1950s, where you'll then have to uh, command one of these coal trains. And the steam trains, of course, that will go through here are going to be uh, much more uh, realistic than the previous versions of this game. And so there's going to be a lot to explore, a lot, really just a lot of things to unpack and a lot of new features that will be coming through that we're going to try to at least scratch the surface on today. We also have the uh, Castle to Warsburg uh, line and also the Southeastern High Speed Rail Line 2 that will give us many new destinations and trains and uh, more of the like, as well as different types of uh, Freight trains, too, uh, with mo these two mostly being passenger trains with uh, Germany and Great Britain here. We'll also see a, a little bit more British uh, mixed cargo, too, with passengers and uh, cargo there. And also uh, the Cajun Pass being more about freight. So one great thing that's wonderful about this game, by the way, is for the training center, all the trains can be driven and or learned from the same place. So instead of bringing us to all sorts of different um, scenarios and whatnot, learning on those tracks, we can kind of learn on tracks that we'll become more familiar with. And over time, if we want to drive, like, for example, a uh, large freight train or maybe an electric train, diesel or diesel electric or electric train, whatnot, uh, there's many different ways to do it in the same place so we can learn to do it easily. So there's a lot of great options in this game too, learning the fundamentals, learning uh, training for specific trains, and then also videos and the option to explore around on foot too for all the extra little goodies in the game. Like for example, emptying garbage cans or putting up maybe posters or maps, all sorts of extra things just to have fun. And of course, this game is not just a train simulator where you're just in the train. Of course, you can also ride as a passenger or get out at all the stations. And oftentimes do a lot of things, too, for switching tracks if you're uh, working on freight cars. That's a lot more common there. So, of course, we can pick a train depot if we'd like to. We can uh, choose our own journey and pick our own train and our own cargo and whatnot for the timetable and for scenarios and training modules, too. So a lot of these for scenarios, for example, we can pick the train and then it'll pick, uh, like, for example, if we would like to do the uh, more modern diesel electric here, uh, we can then pick uh, all sorts of different options for challenges which make it a little bit more enjoyable so things like for example um, a scenario that has us go through a um, oh it looks like there's a wildfire along the track for this Cajun Pass map so something that we'll have to worry about uh, if we do this map and then of course there's more times uh, for like a higher record or whatnot so there'll be leaderboards and things like that and of course things that you can put into your um, XP as well. We can also choose routes here that are already pre-made so then we can go a little bit further into something along the lines of a uh, much more detailed scenario here. Kind of confusing these two. Choose a route and rail journeys are two different experiences so just keep in mind that if you pick the Cajun Pass for example you can get uh, a goal here of passing grade which oftentimes is a little bit more about learning the route so uh, things like being a rookie uh, that help you to learn the train and the route and so there's a lot of great detail here for things to get you started with the basics without even going to the training center or more uh, difficult challenges such as seasons of storms literally hauling stuff in the black of night with giant storms going on so things will handle a lot more differently and that's just the main menu of the game i know a lot of you want me to jump right in but there's a lot of stuff here that differentiates how you can play which is really important because it seems like there would be a limited amount of stuff here with just uh, maybe four routes and a training center 
but the ability to do whatever you want and set it up however you want, this shows you the way to do that. So pretty cool stuff. If you've already watched this far, again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on that notification bell and smash that like button. We'll be taking a look now at one of the Cajun Pass uh, missions for the Train Sim World 3 in San Bernardino, California. But we'll be doing much more in our live streams, and there's probably more on the channel, as well as the Liverpool route for Train Sim World 2, which will soon be updated or at least available for everybody in Train Sim World 3. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start ourselves a scenario, perhaps the uh, through the fire and flames of the San Bernardino uh, Cajun Pass. Let's go. And so finally, through fire and flames, our first look at a cargo scenario with special conditions in Train Sim World 3. So we're in the San Bernardino yards, there are wildfires going, the fire department and other volunteers are helping to fight it, but it's still on us to be able to transport cargo effectively and safely up and down these lines. So pretty soon we'll see some other trains and whatnot moving around the yard, and we're also in an ES-44C4. I'm going to go outside here as I hear a helicopter approaching, and that must be for the fire department as they, yeah, as they continue to fight those fires. Wow, you can even see the moon here. One of the nice things about this game, too, is that uh, I must say that the details of the traffic and the cars in the parking lot really add an illusion, which really helped to complete the immersion. I don't expect the traffic to be completely realistic or whatnot, or to move at realistic speeds, and maybe sometimes glitch out or something like that, but uh, this is a train simulator, not a traffic or a city simulator or driving sim of any sort. So it is good to see all the details, though, of other things like mountains and the clouds, trees, and cars way off in the distance that kind of complete that, as well as all the different types of uh, gravel and um, material types that are present in the yard. Another great thing to look at here too is of course all the detailing on the writing. So if right now we're playing on the ultra high difficulty or <laughs> ultra high realism or graphics settings I should say and really it is difficult in these games to not be able to know what something is because you can't read it but here you can quickly take a glance and if you're looking for something related to fuel uh, for example the pump shut off or if you're looking just to see uh, hinges and um, levers and switches and stuff you can easily see it uh, just at a glance so very nice detailing here on being able to see all the written words in the game but also in the wear and tear and the degradation of things like for example these chains and pillars and of course how dirty the trains look from regular wear and tear the use of the train so it looks good so far and it's really nice to see we're going to take our time with the scenario too and get really distracted uh, we're going to just really not even complete it. It takes about an hour and five minutes to go through all of this. So again, I highly encourage you to make sure that after you've subscribed, you uh, do turn on that notification bell and watch those streams because these are going to be some very long and complex missions, much more so than what you would experience in, uh, for example, just a regular route setup. Got our friend here too. And it is, wow, look at that. We can actually read things across the cabin too. Important in, uh, engine information. I can see things here like, for example, pertaining to uh, locking controls and, uh, yeah, definitely control covers and things there that we can flip up. Great details. That's exactly what I expect from this game, so that is certainly on par, except for one thing's missing. Oh, yes, you know, we have to do it. Oh, yeah. Feels good. Okay, well, let's jump back in and let's get started with what they want us to do. We'll need to uh, set the generator field to on. Insert the uh, reverser and probably set that to forward. Yep. Then the automatic and dynamic brakes need to be released. And we should be ready to go as soon as that's applied. Yep, and there goes the uh, power. Very nice. All right, let's get moving then. So the, we're going to stop at a location in front of us. And hey, there you go. You can see another train moving around the yard there, too. Looks like this one's hauling box cars and also a lot of fuel and some hoppers, too. So very cool that we'll be uh, driving around with uh, this train and, um, of course, seeing other trains come by and have to worry about working around their movements and such and other disasters that could happen or incidents that might require us to reroute on the tracks. So uh, there are some other scenarios, too, where tracks have been washed out and or there was flooding, and so you'll have to change a route uh, in its entirety and or get out and manually switch. You can also do that from the uh, game's map mode, too. If you're not wanting to exit the train, you can also uh, go to the map mode here, and if you press M again, you can actually see uh, where the train is, and you can actually switch the... Um, our train should be up here shortly. We'll stop here, and then we should be able to reverse our train. 
So we'll be able to control all the switching from inside the train if we don't want to do it uh, via the um, manual switching, which means we have to get out of the train and go all the way there. And so it's something to save you a little bit of time. And or it might be easier for some people to um, stay inside the cabin and not have to walk around. Uh, like, for example, in a, like a PlayStation, um, might be a little harder to do and navigate with a controller or something like that, you know, if you want to go and do that. Okay, well now we're moving at three miles an hour. We're going to stop here shortly. Much better. That dynamic brake, very, very powerful once it gets revving up there. And look at all the buttons and switches and knobs and all these other things, most of which actually work, including things like, for example, fans and whatnot, like window heaters and emergency lighting and... There's a fan function up here. I think that, yeah, it actually works. We can turn on, like, a fan and an AC unit. All sorts of cool stuff. Well, let's actually goof around now and try the independent brake and see how quickly that will stop us. It should be rather quickly, actually. Oh, good. And now we can switch the junction, as they say. We're going to also test out the uh, automatic brake and just see if we do things wrong or uh, how they work in general. And all the trains, of course, are different. There's a much, much bigger difference between this train and, let's say, a high-speed train. Almost some of those feel like flying a space station or a computer, as where this really does feel like a workhorse. Let's go back into that menu then, back to the map menu, and we're going to switch this uh, down here. And that should be set now. And now we're going to set the reverser to backwards. And turn out that. And we're going to couple to formation 30 vehicles. So we're going to go pretty slow here, no more than 10 to go and pick up cargo behind us. Oh, looks like we can actually clip through objects now? No, okay. This is one thing that uh, the game still does is where if you're taking a look at your train as it's moving here, sometimes the camera can get a little awkward. You can't go over things, for example. So you'll see the camera actually yeah, drop down and do some weird things as we're just trying to keep an eye on our train. So it would be nice still even if our train, yeah, like what we see right now is still visible even if there's infrastructure in the way. Right, let's go ahead and Let's turn that off now. Also, it looks like they're saying to save fuel center reverser when idling. So that might be something that we can also do as well. Now, this train is indicated as being made somewhere, I think, in the 80s and going all the way up until 2022. So I'm not sure if this train is going to be replaced after 2022 or if it's just saying that it's kind of like a current model up until now. So we need to go and couple to 30 vehicles. Or 30 cars, so we'll go and see where those are. Looks like it's about 2,400 feet behind us, so... Really nice detail here, though. You can kind of see some effects snapping in and out, though, as we zoom in and out like that. Maybe that's some of my graphical settings. I've turned off things like, for example, uh, motion blur, and uh, turned on and off a few things that help OBS to record a little bit better. So this might actually appear a little bit better if you're using a system... Uh, of your own or perhaps maybe even might look better on PC and Xbox on a much bigger TV than I have for a monitor might be a much nicer thing to see alright well we'll continue to increase our speed there's lots of great little buttons here and ways to make these uh, trains uh, travel at a cruise control where you can of course uh, not only cruise at speed with um, all of the loaded cargo but also load cargo to at a certain speed uh, example being like loading coal and um, so you can take a lot of hoppers and go underneath a, a, a coal uh, distribution thing and actually load it up. Or same with iron ore where you can pass under slowly and the hopper will uh, continuously load up your cars as you're driving through. So it's a great way to do that. I'm actually really surprised at how far we're driving back here. It's actually very impressive. All right, about 2,000 feet to go here until we couple to the formation of 30 different vehicles there might be a chance in this scenario too that we'll have to go into the map and do a little bit more uh, automatic switching or well i guess you can call it manual switching but once we click it it's automatic so it's kind of a little bit of both and that is another feature to consider in this game is that sometimes scenarios require you to get out of the train and do a manual switch because they want you to see something specific like for example a down tree or uh, you can just do it however Sometimes the scenarios are a little inconsistent. I've got to say, things look really realistic here. This must be an area for, uh, I don't know, semi-trucks and cargo uh, containers or something to be dropped off. I'm not familiar with the area, but oftentimes when we play these types of games, everybody who lives in these types of areas, especially for 
Passenger trains always report that the stations really are very accurate and the surrounding buildings too. And I'm not sure exactly what scale this game is. It could be a one-to-one -one because some of these missions do take multiple hours to complete. The whole things typically between, uh, example being like a coal mine and maybe some sort of a coal storage area for a power plant or something uh, along those lines. So oftentimes these missions that seem rather short and sweet can actually take a long time considering the fact that you might have to cold start a locomotive, then maybe go and refuel it, then bring it onto the main line, couple to formation and to do some other things. I'm going to move a little faster here just to see if we can get closer to our formation, which we're getting close to now. And we're going to use that independent brake to slow down a little bit more. You can hear it powering up a little bit. And we're probably going to want to just roll back like this. At about 2.5, that's not bad. I don't know what the rule of thumb is for that. But we're probably going to definitely want to keep it under 5. Not a throttle, but... Just a little dynamic break. I would rather go at 7 rather than give it too much power. And there we go, at about 5. There we go. All right, so we'll set our reverser to forward now. And we should be able to go on our way. So now we got about 8.6, it looks like, miles to go. Take a look at our map. Take a look at the map. We can see the route too, which will probably bring us all the way through uh, the pass summit down there until the forest fires hit us. So it's going to be a pretty simple mission until they start throwing all the uh, bells and whistles at us for the scenario challenges. All right, dynamic brake is off, throttles at two. So the HUD in the lower right corner, if you're not familiar with the Train Sim World game, pretty much looks the same for every train that you're in, in terms of it showing you your speed and things like, for example, brake pressure or um, Sometimes it shows you like AC or DC wattage depending on what's going on uh, in a train. And in Train Sim World 2, for example, they have a train that you'll have to switch between AC and DC. And uh, so there's a lot of things to monitor. But the good thing about the HUD like this is that you can always keep an eye on the HUD just as all the previous games uh, in a uniform setting so you can get used to reading it that way. And then as time goes on, you can turn off all these uh, displays and instead of uh, reading these displays, you can just do it by um, essentially just learning where it's displayed inside the cabin. So, you know, here we see we're at about 9.3 and dropping. We're going to go ahead and bring the throttle back to 2 and probably settle at 1. But, of course, you can also have hotkeys to, uh, I believe, like, for example, space bars, the emergency brake. So if we're about to hit something or if something's going bad, we can just hit the emergency brake instead of having the automatic brake swing all the way to the right, which will enable the emergency brake. A little school bus driving by there, nice. There goes our train. Heading about 8.4 miles to our destination. Hopefully this is already set for us. Typically you don't have to look at the route, but we'll take a look at that and make sure that's uh, going according to plan. Looks like it is set to go to our right. And it looks like the menu here is not showing our train moving at all. Nor is it showing a switch in the junction either. So it looks like it does pause. But let's assume, since they didn't give us the order to change any of the um, junctions or whatnot, that it's already preset to be on the correct junction. In fact, if we take a look at the map, it's more than likely that this does lead the correct direction. 
Yep. And it goes up and then swings back to the uh, west and north. I gotta say, the trains look great. It is nice as well on the main menu to be able to sort via train or by uh, route. So that way, if in the future there's multiple trains being used by multiple routes, if you're a fan of a particular train, you can always take that type of train. Or if you're a fan of a particular route, you can find that. It's just more sorting options to be able to find what you want faster to be able to get started. As some of these things can take a bit of time. But that's what's all part of the charm of the immersion and the simulation. You know, a lot of great detail on these little buildings. Definitely nice to see them all in um, random places like that, but in a place that seems to be correct for the location. You know, like, for example, in the middle of a uh, train station or a train yard, it doesn't really seem like a good idea, but with these buildings being off towards a road, it looks like there was a little thought put into that. Interesting map not available. Cup holder. All sorts of mini buttons that we can interact with, including a window. I think we're working at a Wendy's. Feel that breeze. Yeah, really cool that we can actually command the... Yeah, wind, windshield wiper speeds can all be uh, changed from here on the right side. And the fan can also be used too. Although it doesn't really do anything to impact your character. It's not necessarily a survival game where you have to eat and drink and worry about uh, stats and whatnot. You just drive the trains. Should be some visors here too. Fancy. So it would also be a great game for VR. I'm not sure if it's actually a thing just yet, but... It would be a very good uh, thing to see. We'll go ahead and put dynamic brake on one. Uh, we'll put on setup. Just a little bit of braking. Looks like there's about a half second hang up between uh, moving the camera from the front to the back of the train, but that could again be on my graphical settings for it. Although again, they're set to max with a pretty powerful PC. Throttle is set to idle, dynamic brake to one. And it looks like in about 6,000 feet we'll be speeding up to 60 miles per hour, so there won't be much more of the uh, yard left and a little bit more of the open road. Nice to see the mountains off in the distance. Very cool. A little bit more dynamic braking. us steady now I believe there's also routes in this game that have other areas in California such as the baby bullet there's also a lot on the eastern coast too uh, for example the northeastern corridor and a few uh, other lines that go through I believe Harlem there's a few other locations that are uh, featured in the game that way that are pretty uh, cool that are somewhat connected with uh, Grand Central Station and of course the um, or Grand Central Terminal and also airport stops and whatnot around New York Long Island Railroad uh, for example so I hope to see those coming into the game as well as the classic Sam Patch grade. I believe a lot of the previous games should be featured in this one as well, although I have no idea um, what the plan is for making a new game with improvements and such, and of course taking those older scenarios and 
than making them better for the current or the more recent or the future or next gen I guess you could say in this case we're gonna go ahead and speed up again but things look good things sound good I really still wish we would have some sort of a multiplayer mode as well where multiple uh, friends could team up together to transport cargo around in the same open world although it's a little tricky because um, a lot of these lines are not connected if you were playing something like American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator of course you can um, you know drive around with those trucks in a fairly connected world but in this case all of these uh, different train lines are all different whole different sorts of cargoes and are also made for specific purposes so kind of hard to get everybody on the same page for that one but would be fun if you could work with friends to fuel a train operate it navigate load cargo uh, maybe move things around the yard and then eventually deliver the cargo looks good though really curious to see what the other scenarios will be what other challenges that they'll make it's always fun that when they add scenarios to a train line that are not typically something that you would experience in the day to day uh, like for example in some of the British maps I can remember uh, some sports days where there's large football games going on and so thus services are much more busy and the time scheduling is a little different and it's more important to get people to and from the stadium than it is to like um, do what you would normally do. Sometimes there's special express trains or other times there's a down tree or the tracks are, uh, there's a lot of leaves or something on the tracks that are dangerous uh, and there has to be some sort of sudden stop that makes it important for the maintenance crew uh, to be able to, you know, do their maintenance by having the trains divert. And so the scenarios are a really great way to, you know, not only take your time and be casual with it, now there's different types of rewards you can get, bronze, silver, and gold. And so they're meant to be played multiple times and improve. And this, of course, is the type of game that's good for all ages, whether you had a, a dad or an uncle or a friend who was a, um, you know, a, a train driver. Or if you have somebody who's just a young kid who's curious to see how it works, all these options on the screen definitely help them to be able to learn the nuances of the game and then also be able to make improvements to their gameplay over time by literally just maybe brute force learning how everything works in the game and then eventually disabling that HUD. Alright, we got a highway section on our right here. Looks like an on-ramp from one highway to another. And we can open it up now. Bring throttle all the way full. Let's see if we can cause wheel slippage. Awful lot of weight. Well, it looks good. Um, from what I've seen so far, the scenarios offer, I believe it's Germany for the most part, Great Britain secondly, and then the United States thirdly. And I must say that uh, I would like to see more Italy and France, which I think we've seen before as well. Uh, some high-speed trains that go through the Mediterranean for Italy, I believe, and then also some for France as well. Uh, but uh, I really need to be able to see the Shinkansen and other types of trains, too, for Asia in order to uh, really have this game evolve past where it already is. Now, it's great to see more additional modern-day routes included. I think there's a million of them that you could add for Germany, even more than were, are already there, and a million more you could add for the United States for cargo with a nice mix in Great Britain or the UK for uh, both cargo and passengers. But something I really want to be able to see is, yes, of course, driving the, uh, well, I mean, the, uh, you know, the, the Rolls Royce of the rails, the uh, Japanese Shinkansen, and of course, some other Chinese trains as well, too. Some of that will come down to licensing and other uh, arrangements like that, so they're at the mercy of legality that way, but I think it's a thing that we're more than ready to see, just like we were Steam. I believe that the original Train Sim World was adequate and pretty good, and the first, uh, sequel, Train Sim World 2, I think we should have seen Steam right at the start rather than towards the end, and then uh, of course see it again here, new and improved with also the Shinkansen, but there's a lot of stuff 
that could be added to this game over time. And again, this is just a starting point or a platform for those things to be added later on. Could be free updates, could be uh, DLCs, there could be special packs of all sorts of different things included eventually. So, uh, very cool to at least see another new game coming out and more hype around Train Sim in general. We get a new one of these every couple of years and it's always good to see uh, as it's not a yearly franchise, it's not like there's Train Sim 20 and then 21 and 22, but it seems like every three years or so we get this. I think the last time we got a Train Sim World was somewhere at the beginning of 2020, and if you can believe it, it's already almost been three years. We're almost close to uh, 2023, so uh, it's getting closer and closer to three, four years for that one. Although I would say that the engine and the graphics and such are just fine. I want more and more content. I don't think there's anything... Um, you know, that is needing to be emergent. It's not an emergency change for the Train Sim World 2 to have 3 come in and fix a lot of these problems. However, some things can be improved and engines can be built and uh, special features can be built from the ground up for things like Steam, which I think they somehow got around uh, by uh, manipulating some things or something to change it, how it worked in the engine. But I'm no expert on any of that stuff. I just like playing games. And so I think this is a heck of a good game so far. And does a good job of simulating trains, making it look like they go fast, simulating the sounds and some of the operations, and giving you lots of little hotkeys that you can click or tap or adjust in order to have a much more pleasant experience playing the game. One of the things you want to do is, of course, make sure you're having a good time. So, you know, that's probably more important than it actually feeling like a job. And uh, something you don't enjoy, in other words. You wouldn't get much out of it if it were something that you were to buy and not really enjoy. So hopefully this makes it a lot easier for a lot of people to be able to do that. Now we're getting close to where I think the scenario will change over to possibly see uh, some sort of a brush fire or a forest fire that might be nearby. So there could already be a chance of seeing changes on the tracks. We could see a lot of uh, clouds, you know, like smoke, smoke clouds to make it a lot more difficult to navigate smaller chance, you know, less visibility to be able to see other trains on the tracks. So it does increase danger a little bit. I think our train is fully open over here, yeah. Alright, so we're about to hit 60. Well, it looks good. Sounds good, too. Oh, we're next to the highway. So lots of industrial areas here and lots of trains going back and forth. I think we've also seen several like uh, spillways or uh, reservoirs or whatnot, whatever you may call them. Two point two percent grade going up here too, so it will take a little bit of time for our train to be able to climb up that high. As you can see, we went from sixty to fifty-seven. And we'll probably continue to lose speed as the grade increases, if it does. Now, just like in Train Sim World 2, I'm still seeing here in Train Sim World 3 a few uh, things that um, I'm not sure if are on my side or not. Like, for example, distance mo distant mountains popping into the screen. And also a little bit of a hitch or a hang-up or a little bit of a... The game freezes, for example, for like a half second. And um, doesn't let me... Um, hit any sort of buttons or 
uh, be able to look around freely. It kind of just is a full hang up. Now that could again be my graphical settings. And of course, we're also playing a little bit of an early access version. This is not like a day one version. We're playing this on September uh, 1st. And so this game coming out on the 6th means that there could be some final fixes and then also uh, some major updates already being worked on that will be provided shortly before day one and a lot more day one patches. With the graphics and such this high, I want to be able to see more vehicles on the road and make sure that they don't pop in and out as much. Although it's pretty cool that they actually included vehicles. This looks great. That's That right there is phenomenal. Look at that, folks. That is a beautiful Steam screenshot right there. That's gorgeous. But as you can see, that little hang up here. We're not doing anything. We're just kind of looking at the train, and every once in a while, there'll just be a little hiccup. But the train performance itself is beautiful. I think it sounds great, and uh, like I mentioned, it looks great too. And some of these scenarios can also be done with multiple trains. You can choose which type of train you would like to use. Not always, but there are a few scenarios in there that are already set up that way. Uh, to be able to choose between the two. So you can do the same scenario, but differently with a different train that will act a little bit differently with a different locomotive. Might be more powerful, less powerful. May have better braking. Might even have a cup holder. Cup holders are important. All right, so we can go ahead and pull back on that throttle a little bit. Road dynamic braking up to two. And we can pull right off that because of this uh, incline. We'll go back to five. Very nice. But I think the steam train is going to function essentially like how it did in the second game, but even better. And I do have high confidence in some of the German... Uh, high-speed rail lines and the British ones as well. The Germans and the British both do get uh, cargo trains as well, so don't think that the German lines are just specifically uh, passengers. I think they're, they're, they're a much better example of passenger transportation in this game. Um, I like the German freight as well, but the British do a better uh, mix, I think, of both types. So uh, I think the Americans are king, kings of cargo. Uh, the British do mixed cargo pretty well, both uh, passenger and or um, freight, and then also the Germans do a lot of passenger as well, uh, but there's a lot, I think there's a little bit more cargo for the Germans, uh, but the destinations always kind of feel the same, they're all so uniform and whatnot that they all, all just kind of seem to be the same thing. An update on the wildfire, the fire department's on site, but the fire is not under control, there's a slight haze, but the track visibility is still good. Okay, so now the track changes are being reported. Oh yeah, I can see a little bit of visual change here. Oh yeah. It is a little bit more hazy. I think we might need full power here to get up uh, any sort of hill. It's probably going to get worse shortly. But I do like these scenarios for being able to throw curveballs at you, and they're very exciting to play for the first time. And I feel like they should have more custom-made scenarios either that you can share with friends after you make them. As there's a, there's a livery editor in the game, so you can, of course, make your own paint jobs for not only your trains, but some of your train cars, too. But I feel like there should be ways to make maybe your own uh, customer logos and have your own ratings and stuff, of course, other than making your own liveries. But then also to make your own scenarios would be very powerful. It would increase the replayability, like like crazy. All 
Alright, we need to just proceed through another 4,000 feet. Oh, this is getting much more hazy. I can hear the chopper. I don't see him, though. I swear I can hear that chopper out there. Alright, open up everything. Wow. Alright, let's get an update from the fire department. Another update on the wildfire. The fire is growing and the mountainside is now covered in smoke. The tracks are clear, but visibility around Cajun will be lower than usual. Keep your windows closed and remain cautious out there. Oh god, it's getting worse. Yeah, real worse. Alright, we're just going to stay here and just chill out a little bit. Wow, it's very hazy. Oh, we're going to down throttle a little bit. There's a chance that we might need to stop. And we're going to have to reduce speed to 40 miles per hour anyway. We'll do that right now. If we reduce the throttle. Okay, there we are. I can hear the chopper out there, I swear. I'd rather err on the side of caution now with a massive brush fire. Let's call it a forest fire because only you can prevent that. And somebody uh, messed up. And I'm not I'm not blaming you. It could be me. Like, when he says you, he could have meant me. Which is impossible, but it's still possible. You know what I mean? In other words, I'm pleading the fifth and you'll need to speak with my attorney. That's what I'm saying. What? Okay. Well, let's keep the speed limit up to 40 here. Thirty-five miles an hour. There we go, going up to thirty-six. Now, of course, with a good understanding of some of these features like cruise control or whatnot, you can have yourself a much better time by knowing all the tools at your disposal. Alright, 40 mile an hour limit here and about 2,500 feet on mark. Now about 40 miles an hour. 
Not bad. Another train passing us in the haze. Lots of uh, cargo box trailers and also uh, some tankers too. Wow, that's a long train. There it goes. All right, it's possible that we might need to stop at about 6,000 feet. So we're just going to kind of slow it on down and, you know, just make sure we're at 40. Well, obviously, because that's well within the threshold. Man, that is a massive brush fire, though. All right, so this section is 40 miles per hour until we reach the um, about 10,000 feet through this. Now I gotta say, for a game that's about train simulating, uh, this is exactly on par as to what they would say about it. Train sim world, trains simulated from all over the world for the third time. I think the uh, London Underground was uh, another good, great asset that they included as well, or great uh, feature in Train Sim World 2. It was much different to do the Baker Loo line in comparison to doing just like a regular passenger train above ground or even a challenging freight train. That alone was its own thing, and I'd like to see more of that delivered by the devs. Take a look outside. Now we're good for another two miles. Wow. Honestly, it's very eerie. It almost feels like a ghost town or something. Not seeing any traffic anymore. Of course, there's no roads around here, really. Oh, never mind. It's just Walt and Jesse over there. Well, there are roads, but they're just dirt roads out of nowhere. All right, let's see what the fire department says about this next checkpoint. Feels real good, though. These freight trains on these large open areas such as this are very fun. Very minute changes. Sometimes you're going uphill. Sometimes you're going downhill, you have to add a little bit more brake or a little bit more throttle from here to here. But uh, overall, it's good to see a new train type, I must say. All right, so next destination is about 4,000 feet. I feel like there's just snow missing from outside. The, this current weather looks like it could just be snowing. All right, we're increasing our speed now. From 40 back up to 50. 
And let's see what the fire department says about what could be the last leg of our journey here. The fire spread has slowed down, but we've been advised to stop sending further trains until the smoke is clear. Continue past uh, Cajun until you're clear of the smoke. Ah, so we're the last train to go through, I guess. Anything could happen. The, tr uh, the fire could burst out of control again and start heading for the tracks, which could cut uh, some of those uh, wire lines there or even damage the tracks and such. Anything could happen. That much heat, things blowing around. It could be a bad and dangerous situation. All right, so just to go over some last stuff before we go here, the training center allows us to learn fundamentals on pretty much the basics of the game, everything from navigation to uh, screen elements, moving a train, and changing paths, which all trains are going to need to do. So it really doesn't matter which ones you learn with. They're all going to be relatively the same but then we can also do training on every type of train in the game and or variants of it and then also there's specific training modules within that train too so for example if um you know if we click on the uh the es44c4 here we can learn all about the route intro uh, training modules learning to brake, hill start and dynamic braking they're all different that way so there's a breakdown of all the different trains for more than just you know, here's the seat, sit in the seat, take off the brakes and go. There's a lot more information uh, on the training center for that. In the training center, we should be able to go and physically walk around and look at these trains too and go inside them and drive them as well. There should be a section to the game with that. In fact, it'll um, pretty much start to that section before you get here to the main menu where then you can start choosing a route or go on some rail journeys or... Take a look at the depot. Another great thing too is that there's a quick play for the game, so if you're not sure exactly where to get started, you can then do something short or something more. So zero to 30 minutes for the short missions and plus 30 minutes for the big stuff. So if you're in a hurry and you gotta go to the, I don't know, maybe you're going to the airport for a little bit and you're uh, gonna be going to uh, whatever was listed on, like for example, the UK trains, you can go do that and it'll kind of auto assign you some stuff there. And um, yeah, it'll kind of just pick some things out for you. And uh, same with like choosing a route. You can just basically pick something random if you want and or just kind of pick a scenario and go in order. All right. Well, that's it for our first look at Train Sim World 3 for features and some basic gameplay. There is a lot more to this game, though. There's a lot of things we're just not going to be able to cover because of the absolute magnitude of trains, train types, locations, and routes. So I hope you all subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much for leaving a like. It really helps out the channel. I'll see you all soon. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, live streams? Come on over. Come say hi. All right, we'll see you soon. Goodbye.